Welcome back to American Republic. This is your last video of the school year. So in order for us to make sure we keep it that way, let's get right into it. Letter D, Kennedy's domestic agenda. Remember, domestic has to do with what's going on inside the U.S. We talked about yesterday him becoming president just barely over Nixon. Now let's see what he does. His program, his agenda, was called the New Frontier, Kennedy's domestic program to provide economic aid to poor areas, medical insurance like Medicaid for the elderly, financial aid for college students, and a space program. Kennedy used tax policy to stimulate the nation's economy. He pushed Congress to cut taxes, and as a result, spending and investing increased and the economy rebounded. Uh, Look in your books at page 493. There is a box entitled The Space Race. I want you to read that box to yourself. Uh, of course, it talks about eventually getting a man on the moon. Once you've finished reading that box, please unpause the video and we will continue. Number one, struggles with Congress. Uh, Kennedy was opposed by Republicans and some conservative Southern Democrats. In fact, Kennedy will only get some of his programs passed. Uh, he raised the minimum wage to $1.25, passed the Trade Expansion Act, and expanded the Social Security system. Congress rejected Medicare for the time being, aid for college education, and a bill that would have created a Department of Urban Affairs. By the way, all of those things would eventually be created just at a later time. Number two, struggles for civil rights. Nonviolent black protesters launched sit-ins, freedom riders, and encouraged blacks to register to vote. In 1964, black college students sat down at a whites-only lunch counter at a Woolworths department store in Greensboro, North Carolina. They refused to leave unless they were served. Sit-ins continued at other white lunch counters, churches, and schools around the country. Freedom riders rode from place to place in the South seeking to integrate public transportation. They often faced angry white mobs or policemen who responded violently, as you can see in this picture here. Some blacks were mocked, others beaten, some were murdered. A bomb destroyed a black church in Birmingham, Alabama, killing four girls. Black activists who promoted nonviolent protests restrained blacks' revenge for such attacks only with great effort. Martin Luther King Jr. became the first black leader to win national prominence. He became well-known after he helped organize the bus boycott in Montgomery with Rosa Parks. He also founded the Southern Christian Leadership Conference to help the poor and underprivileged through social action. Also, during this time, he penned his famous letter from Birmingham jail justifying his actions of civil disobedience after being arrested for leading a nonviolent protest. The protesters were met by police who used tear gas, cattle prods, attack dogs, and high-powered water hoses to break up their protests. Uh, in your books, turn to page 494. Please read the box entitled Letter from Birmingham Jail excerpt. Uh, once you have finished reading, please unpause the video and we will continue. Question, do you agree with King's arguments about why black Americans could not wait any longer to press for their civil rights guaranteed to them by the Constitution? Uh, that's an opinion question. But I kind of do agree with uh, King. Uh, they have been given these rights now for about 100 years, and yet they are still not treated equally. When would they be allowed these freedoms? Apparently, action needed to be taken. Nonviolent, yes, but action needed to be taken. A couple more things that happened. The 23rd Amendment was passed. It gave Washington, D.C. the right to vote in national elections because, after all, D.C. is not a state. Up to that point, it was not allowed to vote in national elections. Because Washington, D.C. was heavily uh, black, 
the amendment was regarded as a step forward in civil rights. And probably the climax of the civil rights movements in the 1960s was in 1963, the biggest civil rights event was the March on Washington, in which King delivered his famous I Have a Dream speech. The event was to rally support for proposed civil rights legislation. About a quarter of a million black and white Americans participated. In his speech, King spoke of an ideal America where liberty and equality would be a reality for people of all ethnicities. Letter E, Kennedy's foreign policies. Kennedy entered the presidency with several ideas for helping needy countries and spreading peace. Number one, peace policies. First of all, he helped create what became known as the Peace Corps to send volunteers to work in poverty-stricken countries. Peace Corps volunteers served for two years and helped to improve schools, medical care, and conservation in more than 60 countries around the world. To counter the growth of communism in Latin America, Kennedy created the Alliance for Progress to provide countries money for housing, schools, and medical facilities. In all, the U.S. provided about $12 billion. JFK hoped that easing poverty would reduce the unrest that allowed communism to spread. Uh, is this policy similar to Roosevelt's big stick policy? The answer is no. Is it similar to Taft's dollar diplomacy? I'd say yes. Did either program work well? The answer was no. Neither money nor force has seemed to solve the region's problems. So what's the solution? I don't have an answer to that one. Hopefully, someone wiser and smarter than me will figure it out. Number two, the Berlin Wall. The Soviets, to solve their problems, built a wall to prevent anyone from escaping into West Berlin. Up to this time, thousands of East Germans under communism were escaping into the free city of West Berlin. In 1961, the Berlin Wall was constructed and guards were ordered to shoot anyone who tried to escape. Huh, it's kind of interesting how in the Soviet Union, they build walls to keep the people in, while in the U.S., they build walls to try to keep the people out. Interesting, uh, the success or failure of some economic systems today. Kennedy goes to Berlin and gives his famous Ich bin ein Berliner speech in Berlin, but the wall remained. The phrase I, means I am a Berliner it expresses his solidarity with the Berliners desiring freedom. The, in August 1961, the communists erected a 26-mile obstruction through the center of Berlin to stop the exodus of frightened refugees to the west. The main part of the barrier was a wall built of huge slabs of concrete, which were 12 to 15 feet high. The top of the wall was covered with concrete tubes, barbed wire, and other impediments. Beyond the wall in East Berlin, a no-man's land was filled with barbed wire, watchtowers, armed guards who had orders to shoot anyone who tried to escape, attack dogs, and buried landmines. A second wall enclosed that neutral area. All citizens of East Berlin who lived within 100 meters of the Berlin Wall were required to register with the government, and some of them had to leave their homes. After all, upper story windows and rooftops provided per potential escape routes over the wall. The part of West Berlin that was not bordered by East Berlin was also separated from East Germany by guarded barriers, and all about 110 miles of barricades surrounded the city. Despite these formidable obstacles, the desire for freedom proved too strong for many people. People tried to escape in a variety of ways, climbing or jumping over, tunneling under, and even sailing over the wall in a homemade hot air balloon. About 400 to 800 people died in such attempts. Number three. Another situation that arose during the Cold War was the Cuban Missile Crisis. Things had continued to get worse in Cuba. Large 
pro-democracy Cuban community developed in Florida, Miami, Florida, and a plan was hatched to overthrow Castro. Pro-democratic Cubans launched what became known as the Bay of Pigs invasion, but the U.S. withheld promised support and the invasion failed. About 1,500 Cubans landed in Cuba, but at the last minute, JFK withheld promised air support. Castro's forces crushed the invasion and killed more than 400 of the attackers. The rest were captured. Castro had embarrassed the U.S. in front of the world. After the Soviets began sending missiles to Cuba, the U.S. blockaded the island country. The fear was that these missiles could be carrying nuclear warheads capable of destroying American cities before the U.S. could retaliate. The blockade horrified the people of the U.S. Khrushchev was enraged. He blamed Kennedy for pushing the world to the brink of nuclear war. Maybe that's about to happen. In fact, this moment is probably the closest moment to which a nuclear war would have broken out between the two countries. But in the end, the Soviets removed the missiles and the U.S. promised not to invade Cuba. As Secretary of State Dean Rusk said, we're eyeball to eyeball, and I think the other fellow just blinked. The result made Kennedy extremely popular. We had managed to remove the Soviet missiles. Number four, the hotline in the Cold War. To ease tension further, the U.S. and USSR agreed to having a hotline, which it means a direct telephone line between the White House and the Kremlin installed. This would allow the U.S. and USSR to be in constant communication during tense moments of the Cold War, all in the hopes of preventing a nuclear war. Also during this time, the U.S., Britain, and USSR signed the Limited Test Ban Treaty in which they promised not to test nuclear weapons above ground and each nation would tell the others of any underground tests that it conducted. Lastly, let's talk about Kennedy's assassination. Unfortunately, on November 22, 1963, on a very testable date, Kennedy was assassinated by Lee Harvey Oswald. This photograph was taken moments before the assassination took place. As JFK rode in an open car down a street in Dallas, Texas, he was shot and killed. The reasons for the assassination remains a mystery today. The official conclusions claim that Oswald acted alone, but two days after the assassination, Jack Ruby, a local nightclub owner, shot and killed Oswald on live television before he could be tried. So the wonder of why went to the grave with him. His death became a keystone moment for Americans at the time. Like Pearl Harbor in the generation before and 9-11 in my generation, if asked, anyone can remember exactly what they were doing and where they were. Like Abraham Lincoln, JFK became a hero after his death. Congress quickly passed many of Kennedy's new frontier programs, which had been stalled in Congress as memorials to the late president. Kennedy's VP, Lyndon B. Johnson, became the new president. That, my students, is the end of the notes. That is the last video that you will need to worry about for this school year. Again, if you want to know more about what happened in U.S. history after this, please uh, look in the book or, surprise, surprise, ask your folks, ask your grandfolks, see what they remember from the time periods that they lived. After all, this is only about 50 years ago, so your parents and grandparents were alive during this time period. Ask them what happened. Ask them about their experiences. You've got a whole summer vacation to do it. Um, please do not forget about taking the Chapter 24 test. That's all that you have to do for schoolwork in the packet. Please make sure that you turn in your textbook when you turn in your exam, and hope you all have a good rest of the day. Good weekend and an awesome summer vacation. Be good, do good. Bye.